Lying in muscle groups can be frustrating as they can really throw off the balance of your physique overall. Fortunately, science has found ways to increase muscle growth, potentially even in those stubborn areas. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today with you, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. Today, we're breaking down how to improve upon your lagging weak muscle groups. There are two big things you need to do to improve your weak and lagging muscle groups. The first one is to give it plenty of time. You need to have realistic expectations when it comes to the muscle growth timeline. A lot of people seem to think that within a couple of months, you can pack on a ton of muscle. The reality is that muscle growth takes time. And if you see advanced natural bodybuilders, it often takes them years to make any appreciable improvement upon their physique. And that's years of consistent hard work. If you're less trained than this, you can certainly expect to see faster progress. For many people with their weaker or lagging muscle groups, it is often just a time of being patient, continuing what you are doing. A good amount of muscle growth can take at least six months to occur. So I think if you're really trying to improve on a weak muscle group, set a time frame of at least six months to dedicate to really focusing on that one muscle group or those two muscle groups that you're seeking to improve upon. Additionally, if you've been training for six months or less, you're still a beginner. And I think it's too early for you to really think about specializing on a certain weak or lagging muscle group, as what you perceive to be a weak or lagging muscle group right now could just be very temporary. When you first start training, you're still developing your physique in a major way. That weak muscle group could quickly become a stronger muscle group or even a strength within your physique if you just continue training everything equally. Depending on your background, you can have certain strengths and weaknesses when you first set foot in the gym. And those can be naturally remedied by just training everything pretty well. So if you're new to the gym, just keep training everything pretty evenly. And then once you're about six to 12 months into your journey, then you can consider specializing. But if you do want to specialize, here's the second key to finally improving upon your stubborn muscle groups. The second key to finally improving your stubborn muscle groups is going to be to specialize on those muscle groups, or essentially really prioritize their muscle growth and how you train them compared to other muscle groups. The aim essentially here is to accelerate muscle growth of those muscles to the maximum potentially at the expense of the rate of progress for other muscles. There is likely going to be a trade-off here, so you should only specialize if you're okay with the idea of getting less muscle growth in other areas. And here's how to specialize on a lagging muscle group. First, to see your best growth, you will likely need to use higher volumes. Both the two most recent meta-analyses by Basbao and colleagues and by Schoenfeld and colleagues in 2022 and 2017 respectively, generally found more hypertrophy when it comes to training with higher volumes compared to lower volumes. Specifically, in the meta-analysis by Basbao and colleagues, when they compared doing 12 to 20 sets per week to doing over 20 sets per week per muscle in trained lifters who had been training for at least one year, while you saw very solid growth in the 12 to 20 set range, you potentially saw a bit more growth depending on the muscle and depending on how large of an effect you're looking for when you went above 20 sets. And this general idea of going above 20 sets potentially being better for hypertrophy has been studied relatively extensively now. Specifically, we have eight studies comparing set volumes of over 20 per week to under 20 per week. Across these eight studies, four have found more hypertrophy with over 20 sets, whereas four have found similar hypertrophy between over 20 sets and below 20 sets. However, a caveat to this research is that many of these studies don't have you training your entire body with these crazy high volumes. And that's because you probably couldn't be training with 20 or 30 or even more sets per muscle per week for all of your muscles at once. First, it'd be hard to recover from, and secondly, most people wouldn't have the time anyways. Doing that many sets does take a lot of time, and to a large extent, both of these issues can be circumvented with specialization. Increase volume in lagging muscle groups up to 20 to maybe 35 sets at the most. Meanwhile, for an equal number of muscle groups as you're specializing on, say you're specializing on three muscle groups, drop the volume to five to 10 sets per week per muscle group, for three other muscle groups. Ideally, they would be in the same rough region. You wouldn't necessarily want to specialize on your chest, back, biceps, triceps, and shoulders at the same time, as there will be a lot of overlap between these, and you could still train more than is productive. By increasing the volume on certain muscle groups and concomitantly reducing it on other muscle groups, you're still keeping an overall balance within your program 
when it comes to overall volume and making sure you're not overdoing things. Additionally, it can also make it much more feasible in terms of time. If you're going for crazy high volumes on all muscle groups at once, you may simply not have the time to do so. By only selecting a few muscle groups, those stubborn areas, to focus on at a time, you're able to effectively train these muscle groups with higher volumes. All right, let's say you've increased your volume to 20 to 30 sets per week per muscle, and you're wondering whether or not you should increase it even further. How do you know if you should increase the number of sets even further to potentially see more growth? Well, one good hallmark is going to be your performance. If your performance is consistent week to week, or even steadily climbing, that is a good sign that you could potentially add more sets into your training for that muscle group and see a benefit. On the other hand, if your performance is sort of dropping gradually or even pretty quickly dropping, that is a sign that you might be training that muscle group with more volume that you can recover from. And in fact, performance is probably the best sign when it comes to interpreting whether you're training too much or whether you could potentially have even more training. If you'd like to see a long discussion on the high volume research for hypertrophy, check out the Strong by Science podcast that will be linked in the description. Another facet of specialization is that you'll probably want to train with the specialized upon muscle groups, those weak areas, a little bit more frequently. While training a muscle group twice or maybe three times a week is great for hypertrophy when you're doing 10 to 20 sets per week, there is a meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues on training frequency that suggests that with higher volumes, frequencies of say three or more times a week may become more beneficial. So if you're doing 20 to 30 or even more sets for a muscle group in a given training week, you may benefit from training it three, four, or potentially even five times a week. At the very least, consider increasing training frequency. Next, although the evidence on this isn't actually favorable, if anything, it indicates that there is a minimal, if any difference on your hypertrophy, I would personally put the exercises or the training for the muscle groups that you're specializing on first within your sessions. Ordering your exercises to train whatever you care about the most first in a session when you're freshest does make theoretical sense despite the evidence on the topic not supporting any sort of meaningful difference. If you really care about muscle growth in that one area, it may just be worth giving a shot. Next, you can also try training a little bit closer to failure on average for that muscle group and training a little bit further from failure for other muscle groups. Once again, it's the same principle as when it comes to volume. Training a little bit closer to failure may give you additional hypertrophy, as per recent meta-analysis by Robinson and colleagues, finding that the closer to failure you take a set, generally, the more hypertrophy it causes, but equally, you want to strike a balance within your overall program. If you train everything super close to failure all the time, that may not be productive. So, volume-wise, frequency-wise, training to failure-wise, and exercise order-wise, that is how I would structure a specialization phase to start growing your stubborn areas. Besides that, the same principles of muscle growth do still apply as when you're not specializing. Let me give you a quick rundown of what those are so you can maximize growth in those stubborn areas. First, if you want to maximize hypertrophy, you will likely want to be in a calorie surplus, gaining around 0.5 to 1% of body weight per month. Likewise, you'll want to intake sufficient protein to maximize muscle hypertrophy. Based on a meta-regression by Morton and colleagues from 2017, that would be around 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight at minimum per day. Next, whatever exercises you perform for that muscle group need to be really effective. And I have a whole series on that very idea that you can check out in the description below or on the screen right now. But let me give you a quick breakdown of what makes an exercise really effective for muscle groups. First, the exercise should target one of the functions of the target muscle. And across your training week, you will want to target, hopefully, many of the functions of the muscle in a variety of positions. Next, the exercise you pick should have the target muscle, that stubborn area, be the limiting factor. And that's where potentially incorporating more isolation movements into your routine can be helpful. If you found lackluster growth of your chest, for example, by just doing a lot of pressing, maybe doing some more flies instead would be helpful. With isolation movements, you're very much increasing the chance of the target muscle group being the limiting factor training it closer to failure, potentially save more hypertrophy. And finally, the exercise should be stretch friendly. And that comes down to three things. One, it should place the target muscle group into a lengthened position. Two, that position should be reasonably challenging and involve plenty of tension. And three, the exercise would ideally be length and partial friendly. Length and partials are something that the researchers looked at recently, comparing it to a full range of motion. Essentially the idea of just doing partial repetitions in the stretch part of the movement, 
that may be beneficial for inducing more muscle growth. And so if a movement lends itself well to length and partials in terms of safety, that is a bonus. Next, when it comes to repetition ranges, you could work in any rep range from five all the way up to 50 reps per set and still maximize hypertrophy on a per set basis. However, there are a couple of considerations. First, some data suggests that you do want to get in a variety of rep ranges when your aim is to maximize hypertrophy. So don't just do sets of five, do some sets of 10, 20, 30, maybe even more as well. Second, most of your work should probably take place in the five to 50 rep range for practical reasons. Specifically, one of our own meta-analyses found that generally people are pretty accurate at gauging how close to failure they are. However, when they perform more than about 12 reps, they become less and less accurate and become more likely to train further away from failure, or essentially start sandbagging their sets and not going as close to failure as maybe they should. And so just for ease of pushing close to failure and minimizing discomfort, going a little bit heavier for most of your training is going to be a good idea. And to end this video exactly where we started it, give it time. Seeing any appreciable muscle growth, especially in a stubborn area, is going to take a while, especially if you've been training for years and years and years, and you're trying to finally balance your physique, it's going to take at least six months, maybe even more, to see any appreciable progress. Stay the course, employ these principles, and you will likely see additional hypertrophy in those stubborn areas, and hopefully fix those lagging muscle groups. During that time, try and hit PRs that you've never hit before with good technique, using all of the principles I mentioned during this video in doing so. And with that being said, that is the video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below letting me know what else you want to see me cover from a scientific perspective. Equally, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. I know about 50% of you aren't subscribed at the time of watching this. So please do subscribe. Additionally, I know even the people who are subscribed right now haven't hit the bell. A lot of you at least. So please do consider hitting the bell so that you get notified whenever I release a video. A lot of work goes into these videos and I do appreciate your support. If you'd like me to coach you, consider checking out the link above and I could become your coach. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and I will see you guys, my subscribers, you better have subscribed next time. Peace.